Hey, welcome back to the Slot Works YouTube channel. Today, we're doing a 300 hour service on a 300 horsepower Mercury Verado. It is a V8 model. So I believe most of the information in this video will work for any of the uh, V8 four strokes. If you got the old inline six Verado, none of this information works for you. It's a completely different animal. So if you do have one of those motors, the one thing I will caution you is drain the oil before you remove the lower unit. And don't put oil back in it until your lower unit's back in it. But uh, other than that, the service isn't much harder. There's, the filters are in a different location. There's, there's just some little different stuff you gotta do. But uh, just word of warning on that. The 300 hour is slightly more involved than your standard 100 hour. The 100 hour is basically an oil change, gear loop change. It's pretty easy. There's a few other things you just need to inspect. So here's a really good look at what Mercury prints for your service schedule. Um, I got your 100 hour stuff. That's replace, inspect, 300 hours, all of this and all of that. But anyway, I'll give you an idea of what you're looking at. With the 300 hour, you start getting into changing out your stretch belt changing out your water pump. This particular motor sits in the water, so we'll be changing out all the anodes. It's, it's time. We've got a fuel filter up here under the cap and it gets changed. I like to go ahead and change the spark plug out at 300 hours. I don't remember what the book says on this one, but I've done it with the Optimaxes, the inline six Verados. I'm just gonna keep doing it. It's cheap insurance every 300 hours to might have to worry about these things. I guess that's about it. Um, tools you'll need. Bucket. Piece of uh, half inch ID, three quarter inch OD vinyl piece. A link that'll make it from the drain that's on the other side into your bucket. Flat edge creek iron. Just because. We'll probably need it for something. You can find it in your 10 millimeter socket. I like having about a 2 inch extension. This will be for the brain plugs on the lower unit. Your big socket for your prop nut, that's an inch and a sixteenth. You gotta get that off to get to your drain and fuel on your lower unit. The drain for your oil is 5 eighths. I'm gonna break that loose with a 5 eighths socket first. And then once the hose is on there, we'll just use the wrench to, to work that valve and a 14 millimeter socket for your spark plugs. We might end up having to get more tools for this. I don't recall what all we gotta pull off to get to that belt fit. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this prop. Um, there's no lock tabs or anything on this particular hub. Your motor might be different. We're just gonna use a block of wood a little wedge between a blade and your cavitation plate. When you're loosening this, watch these tips. They can get very sharp if you run in sand. A little extension would give you a little away from there if you've got a sharp prop. Well, that's one way to do it. If you do have this style of hub, Keep these washers in the position they're in. Just slide it off as, a, as an assembly. And that's the way you want to go back on with it. This will need to be torqued. I'll give you those torque specs when we get to that point. And while the motor's trimmed up in this position, we're going to just break these drain and your vent loose. I'm not going to open these up yet, just, just wanted to break them loose. Now we trimmed it all the way down. We're going to let all that water out of there. There's, If it's been sitting outside with them trimmed up or whatever, there's going to be some water in there. We'll just go ahead and drip that out of the way. That is the drain for your oil. cavitation plate spacer if your motor's equipped with one and then your oil drain. Okay so we got our bucket in place. 
And so we just gently broke that loose and right back to being snug. Now we can stick the wrench in there pretty easy once that hose is on and open it up. Now, if you hold that hose as you loosen it, you know, that hose will spin on that fitting. It, it's pretty easy. So at this point, I'm going to drain the gear lead. And while that's draining, we're going to make sure it doesn't have a bunch of water in there. Try and grab your little gasket out of there. So it's a pretty good sign when the gear lube just doesn't start running out until your vent's out. And these drain so slow, I'll just bring y'all back when it's done. So while our stuff is draining, we're going to pull this cowling off never been into one of these just press down it pops open that's where you check your oil hit that little red knob and lock that handle up that'll disengage the hooks that hold this cowling down and then we'll be pulling it straight up off of there I'm gonna have to set the phone down to do it but you get the idea so I knew we need a flathead screwdriver for something we got to pull that hose clamp off this top cover off. I don't see anything else holding it down yet, but uh, I'll bring it back if there is. Okay, that hose clamped loose. We pulled this hose off. And you gotta pull the dipstick up out of the hole. And then this is just the cover just come right off. There's nothing else holding it on. Now if you were just doing a hundred hour service, you wouldn't even have to pull this cover off. You can get to this filter without doing that. I pulled that cover off because we were going to change this belt out while we're doing this 300 hour service. Still draining, but we're getting there. I did mention it earlier, but you will need a hole for the All right, so while everything's draining, we're going to go ahead and remove the, the oil filter. Um, this little yellow plug, there's a uh, funnel basically up underneath that oil filter, and this is a drain. If you take a uh, soda water bottle or water bottle and cut it off where it's at an angle, you can see how that fits up underneath there. And we'll remove this yellow plug when we go to pull that oil filter. And any oil that drains out of that oil filter will just run into this cup. And we can plug it back up and uh, keep that all pretty clean. Not a lot of oil, but if you just run this motor a couple hours beforehand, it would probably have a little bit more. Now I like using some uh, 24C or some kind of grease. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of that on your gasket. But then the other thing I like to hit is this little seam. Just go ahead and Make sure you get some grease in there. That'll keep water from sitting in there and rusting out your oil filter. If you're in fresh water, you might not have to worry about it, but if you're around salt water, it's a pretty good idea. Once we get it where we need it, we just kind of hit all the excess off of there. I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see that groove wouldn't let any water in there now. Now I 
I know you're only supposed to do any type, but I like giving them a little extra shit. a six inch extension. All right, this might not be the best tool for the job, but it works. We'll be inspecting all these plugs later. It's got a little bit of carbon buildup around the edge, but the, the center looks pretty good. Do you like putting a little 2,4-C on your spark plug threads? Try not to get it up there. And then any spark plugs with this type of collar on them, you go snug and then about a half a turn. That's all you need. Those caps are pretty hard to push on. Just make sure they're on all the way. I'm going to continue on with this. Uh, do all eight or all six that are left and bring out back when we get something different. All right, well, all the plugs look pretty good. You can see the tips are tan. There is a little carbon around this ring. Not too concerned with that. One reason I like to change them every 300 hours is you can see that little rust ring already happening around the that porcelain there. So they were sparking fine, no misses or nothing. Cheap insurance, just go ahead and change them. And I don't know if the time lapse caught it or not. I dropped one of those spark plugs. Went ahead, just rechecked the gap. I usually check the gap on all the plugs as soon as I get them. That's why I wasn't messing with it while I was installing them. Because I already verified they were good. But if you drop one or bump one or something, it's always good just to check it. Okay, so the oil quit draining. Looks like about two gallons in there. Lock this back on. Snug it down with our 5 8 socket. Alright, so we'll, we'll put the oil in when we get back up there. Next, we'll uh, do the lower unit. Okay, so inside our water pump kit, we're going to dig those two little yellow seal washers out. Be replacing the ones that are on our, our vent and fill pump. And then we're also going to trim this motor up where the cavitation plate is level. You can use the quart size jugs. You can use whatever you want, but I highly recommend getting something with a pump to get your gear lube back in there. We're going to go ahead and put our new seals on just so we got that out of the way we'll be filling from the bottom as you do with all of you pretty much you 
you don't necessarily even have to get that fitting real tight to get it screwed in there and go pump it. And what we're looking for is the oil to come out here. This is our vent in this particular lower unit housing. So there we go, we got gear lube coming out. We're gonna let this sit for a minute or two and then we'll just see if we can squeeze a little bit more in there, let some of the air bubbles settle out and whatnot. Okay, well it's been a few minutes. Give it a gentle pump. That's all it's gonna take. Verify your 10 millimeter socket didn't run off and go somewhere when you weren't looking. cap off a bit. At this point you don't need to crank down with the wrench just yet but you do want it snug. You don't you want to you want to hold a vacuum on this. Uh, it makes it where you lose less getting this plug back in. Kind of just set that and they're ready. Gonna snug these with the ratchet, but you ain't got to use all of it, just give it a little snug. That'll be good, it, it won't leak, it'll be just fine, they won't rattle loose. Okay, so I don't know how well this is going to come out on video, but this is the fuel filter we're going to change. It's got one electrical plug on there. We can pretty much just reach in there and get that one. Use a little screwdriver. Got that loose. Now these fuel line connections, you push this big side in and that will disengage the clip. So push that in, give it a little pull there we go I have to turn this flashlight off it's gonna take me both hands to get into this one and I don't know if y'all can see it way that it's up in there anyway Yeah, I'm gonna have to need both hands. There we go. So I use needle nose pliers to push that one off. Okay, so once those hoses are loose, this should just twist and come right up out of here. So we made that sound easy. So for our new one, we're going to go ahead and add a little 2-4C marine grease just on this outside. And that'll help make it a little easier to get that apart next time. Kind of help keep that O-ring lubricated. It'll come out a whole lot easier. And I don't know if y'all can see it way down in there, but... It's got a little keyway slot that that goes into. Push it down and twist. Get our fuel line snap back in place there they definitely make a we'll go ahead and get this wire plug on while we can get to it these will definitely make an audible click 
you want to hear that that lets you know they're on there that's it it's kind of in a crazy spot to get to but it's it's not terrible so if you want to make sure that you're not getting bad gas or gas with water in it just dump this fuel filter out into something glass jar or hell even a whole water bottle And then you can pick this up but hold it at an angle and nothing but nice clean gas you know, water drops would be forming on the bottom if it was if it had water in there but, yep looks good to me okay so get to this stretch belt you got to pull that alternator loose to get it off and get the new one on so there's four bolts that hold all this plastic bracket. We're just going to swing this stuff out of the way. So now we can access our alternator bolts. So I just wanted to break them loose for now. Now they make a special tool that'll sit down here and grab that. But if you got a regular old flywheel deal, you can, you can move it. We're just going to use a screwdriver to get this up and out. So I usually like to just use hand tools, but this is one of those times that qualifies for a little uh, mechanical advantage. That blue Loctite. Good stuff. It's an old belt. I mean, it's still in good shape, but it's one of those things, you know, do you want to take a chance with it? This isn't something that would be easy to change out there in the water. Alright, stretch belt tool. I don't know if it's all right. That's all it is right there. giving it just a little extra turn I don't know if you saw it or heard it but it was a little off on this pulley up under here it just popped into place but we're gonna check it just to make sure everything's in the right spot
being that your stretch belt tool has to come out of that little bitty hole, I don't even know one of the O'Reilly's stretch belt tools will work. You might have to go with the Mercury one to even make that happen. We got two gallons of 1030 going in it. I guess I should have put that lid back on before the bat. somebody that give you a hand, probably be a good thing to have an extra set of hands on it. As far as tools go, three quarter inch wrench, three quarter inch socket. I did already break those loose just to make this part a little quicker. I like having a ratchet strap. This is not for removal so much as reassembly. So what I like to do is preset this where I got about an inch or so around this cavitation plate. For now, we'll just tuck it there. What this is for is when we go back together, we can get it up in there, get the shaft where it needs to go, drop that around there, and that'll be my extra set of hands. It'll give me a chance to let the lower unit rest, and I can reset for where I need to be putting the nuts on or you know getting it the rest of the way up in there. When you're loosening these four, try and loosen you know this one and then loosen that one. So don't just take both of these off and then take the other side. Kind of let it down equally. We'll have a washer that comes out of there too. Once you got them all broke loose, then you can pull them off that edge. Now I usually leave this one, the one that's on this other side, this is the one I'll leave a nut on. And that'll, number one, keep the lower unit from just falling out. But number two, when I grab this thing, I just have that one to undo, and then I can slide it out. Dropping this one, you need to keep an eye on when your wrench will still come out. To reach that point, we gotta switch to this end. I'm just gonna leave that one on until we get this knot loose. held on by that one nut right now. Before you drop it loose, it's nice to have a plan of what you're going to do with it. Um, I built a, uh, well, let me show you. That's what I built for them. It's just a couple of pieces of scrap angle iron and a C channel welded together and bolted to an O-end statement. This is nice because it'll hold it upright to work on that water pump. You can uh, you can do kind of just a wooden stand that just sits on the floor or something to slide that skeg up in. And this is what I was talking about. Why you could build something out of wood pretty easy. And just, you know, something to stick that skeg into. You'll obviously have to make it tall enough where that skeg won't bottom out on the ground, but it's, it's pretty easy to throw something together. And in a pinch, you can slide this between your tailgate and the bed and pick up. And 
and that'll that'll hold it good enough to, to get what you need done here. Just to keep this spacer on because it will fall off of there i'm gonna just i'm hoping it'll just stay right there because it's a it's a whole lot easier putting this lower unit back in it this just stays where it's at but i don't want it falling off so that will uh that'll keep that from happening all right it's water pump time 10 millimeter well, salt water is great, ain't it? We're gonna really hope that none of these are gonna break. That first 300 hour service is always uh, a bit nerve wracking. Don't like the way that feels at all, but we'll go with it. So I try not to go too far with them. If they feel like they're building up a bunch of heat, I'll just stop. We'll come back to them in a minute. When we go back together with this, we won't have any issues after that because we're gonna grease the heck out of it. You can see that corrosion is already starting. So if you do break one of these bolts off, it's not the end of the world. The easiest thing I've found to do is just drill it, put a heat of coil in the hole and be done with it. I mean, unless you like dealing with broken easy outs, that's the heat of coil is definitely the best option. So at this point, we're just going to clean up what needs to be cleaned up. These, this part we're going to reuse. We're not going to reuse this. We're going to reuse this cup. We have a new water pump impeller for it and a new keyway. I'll show you that kit. So this is the parts that are included in the water pump kit. Um, the, it is missing the two yellow seals that go on your drain and vent plugs. I've already taken those out of there. but. They come with the three gaskets, the wear plate, impeller keyway, two O-rings. I think we only use one of these. These two green strip seals of some sort. You got the seal that goes around the drive shaft, and this is an installer tool. This would be purely to put that on, and then it pulls back off and goes in the trash can. Don't leave it in place. So what we're going to do is just start cleaning from the bottom back up. We'll just start with this spot here. Salt water boats that sit on the water. This is just uh, something you'll see a lot of. I mean, it's not much of a way to uh, stop that from happening. So you get to pay the price. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, it's fine like that. Next we'll do our plate. Getting that groove real good. And mainly what we're trying to do is get any high spots off that's gonna keep that gasket from sealing down. Get inside your screw holes. We're gonna be using lots of this. Trying to get it in that groove. 
I don't know what these things do. I guess they're important. A little grease in there will make them easier to get out next time. I don't think there's really a top or a bottom to them either. So the next thing I do is we're going to grease the heck out of this gasket. And I know everything out there says you are not supposed to do this, but I have way less problems with water, you know, saturating in this gasket and causing more of a corrosion issue so if there's grease there water won't sit there or won't be absorbed at least that's my theory I'm sticking to it So you'll notice on this wear plate, two of these holes are not like the other two. And that's for these alignment pins. They won't fit in there. They'll fit there. So these alignment pins, I'm going to go ahead and say they're pretty necessary. Now you could build them out of a bolt, a long bolt, and maybe some sort of uh, metal sleeve or tubing that will be, you know, the size to fit in this hole. Um, or just order the mercury ones if you're doing enough of them I would just get the mercury ones and be done with it but uh, we'll screw these in that'll kind of hold everything as we stack it up you do need to make sure to put them in the right spot on here that's messed me up a few times <laughs> So the first thing that goes on is our gasket. It's metal, but I'm still going to grease the heck out of it. I did have it right the first time. Wear plate goes on. Because if I put it the right direction, it would work better. My new gasket. grease also on the bottom it'll help kind of stick this in place so once we get the impeller on there when we go to putting everything together kind of help hold this down turn this so y'all can see the keyway that flat spots where this is going to ride now if you notice on your impeller that groove will always line up with one of the vanes so if you hold on to that, you know where it needs to go down on there. I guess we should have cleaned that off. Never let a mechanic borrow your knife. We work on both sides of the blade so we sharpen it. So the other nice thing about mercury impellers is you can actually see where the little groove is from the top side. And this doesn't matter which way it goes. That's pretty nice. Alright, so back to the regular scheduled programming. Hold your keyway in place. Slide that down. It might take a little wiggling to Get it started in the groove. Might 
take me a little bit more since I'm trying to look at it backwards. There we go. Okay, before we get going too much further, we're going to look at our old wear plate. I don't know how well that's going to show on this little camera. This wear plate isn't in bad shape, but you can kind of start to see where it's fill, you know, caught starting to groove. So that that's why this item is replaced all the time. And then inside your cup, get your own puller out. These will have a tendency to groove as well. This one's nice and flat in there, so it'll be great. But if you're having some overheating issues, be sure and check this out real well. Make sure there's not a big groove in here or a big groove on your wear plate. I mean, you can put all the brand new water pump impellers you want in there. If it's got a groove, it's not going to work. Our old impeller is getting pretty dry. It's not really coming back. You know, blades aren't really coming back very straight. The old gasket, I'm just going to scrape all that out. All right, so now when you're going back together with these, we're going to use just some dish soap for lube. Put a little in here, move it around, get your blades good. This will help a bunch. I may, way more than you'd ever imagine. This is also where your alignment pins help you out. So that's holding everything where it needs to be. We're just going to push down on this housing as we twist this drive shaft clockwise. It's that easy. We're going to leave these pins in until we get our other two bolts in. I got to clean them up first. Uh, some kits, some of the full kits will come with new bolts. This one did not. So we'll get those cleaned up and greased. And this is how we're cleaning them, in case you're wondering. We'll get all that old white corrosion off of there. That's a woodpecker. On a metal building. <laughs> wow. Okay, so grease the heck out of these. We're just going to barely snug these down. Actually, we're just going to get them touching. And once they're touching, as we're tightening, we're going to turn this. This will just ensure that nothing is getting pinched up underneath there. Pins. Go ahead and stick our other two bolts in. Make sure you start these with your fingers when they're not cross threaded. Sometimes it's hard to tell when those holes have a bunch of corrosion in them. And these are little bitty old bolts. Don't use this whole wrench to tighten them. Actually, backing down to a quarter inch drive would probably be a little safer. Don't be scared to grease this stuff. Installer tool. Now one of those orange O-rings from the kit is going to go in here. Just go ahead and put some grease in that groove. And we can pop the new O-ring in there. All right, 
that. So now we're going to clean up these studs. We go around, hit them all with the wire brush. Once they're clean, more grease. Yeah, so we got five of these to do. We'll get that done. Okay, so here we go, the fun part. Um, this is purely here for if things don't go right. If I can manage to get that dry, that lower unit up in there and put the nut on to hold it, I'm gonna do that first. But if it doesn't go right up in there I need, and I need a reset, that's when this comes in handy. We'll pop that around. That'll just hold us there to keep us from having to go through the whole process again. We are going to set this one with an easy reach. shift shafts are set up they're a whole lot easier to get in they kind of line themselves up so that does help with the bunch i don't know if i mentioned it earlier but be sure to grease your drive shaft lines the ones that go up in the power head it's just a good practice to get into anytime you got it off add some grease on those lines i just put that nut on i didn't mess with the washer so once i get the other three on we'll put the washer back on to stick to a nut, add a little grease. Clean this shaft off because it's the grease that's on there still feels pretty good. If it was dry or sticky, I'd probably go ahead and clean that off and then do fresh. Uh, we're in pretty good shape here, so we're just gonna go with what we got. You know, this prop comes off every hundred hours, which is kind of nice. You got to get to those and drain the gear loop, but well, that keeps your prop coming on and off the shaft and keeps stuff from getting real sticky dealing with twins or triplets or quadruplets or whatever the heck you call them. Make sure you put the correct prop back on the correct motor. Yeah. These solid hubs kind of fun to deal with. We've kept our washer stack everything in order. The torch specs for these. I'm not even kidding, is a minimum of 55 foot pounds. So, basically, anything over 55 foot pounds, I guess. 
I'm going to go ahead and go with 60, well, 65. More than 55, right? Yep. Always give it a spin, make sure your prop shaft's spinning nice and straight. You should probably do that before you take the prop off. Okay, so on to the anodes. I'm not going to show you this whole process. We'll walk you through the center one and one side. You can figure it out from there. It's pretty simple. 10 millimeter socket. Surprisingly, most of these screws are typically come out fairly easy. Now, you would think that they would be very corrosion prone, but it's not too bad. With that said, we are going to put grease on them when they go back in. And that's our old anode. But this is our uh, difference. So you're supposed to change these out when they get to like 50%. I'd say we're pretty much there. Hopefully the camera is catching that. We just put a little grease on the bolt. Try not to smear it all over your anode. We're going to start with this side that the ground strap isn't attached to, just because that makes it a little easier for us. Now the, the screw with the washer was the one that this was attached to. You got to kind of pay attention to how this was set up in there when you're taking it off. And again, that's a little bitty old bolt, so don't get too carried away. Now to get the side ones, it's easier to turn the motor. This whole deal will pivot or swivel. Same deal here. Just one screw in each of these. These aren't wore out as bad, but we're going to change them as a set. Here's what a new one looks like. There's a little locating pin. Pop it in the hole and then you can put your bolt in. Okay, so again, we're going to just pay attention to how that wire is routed. As you can see, it's a pretty simple little deal here. All right, there we go. I'll get the rest of those changed. It's the same, just turn the motor back the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and do these other ones on this other motor off camera. All right. Well, we're done. 300 hour service complete. If you're watching this video for 100 hour service, you got the information you need. Just scroll around and find it. Here's the tools I used. So this is literally every tool we use for this project. 
the only mercury specific items we have is the uh, stretch belt tool and the locating pins for the water pump you may or may not have that flywheel tool that's not a mercury tool you can pick that up anywhere but everything else pretty basic stuff uh, you know torque wrench and socket set either three eighths or half inch drive and a couple of wrenches a few pairs of pliers and a flathead screwdriver pretty much got it made almost forgot about our little block of wood it's a very important tool so i got a finished water pump on another motor See you in the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. I forgot. I'm gonna pull this back out, run it in a tank, verify everything is uh, good, the oil level's good. I'm also gonna pop that cowling back off and use the water hose, do a little fresh water rinse, rinse any salt out from inside there. You shouldn't hurt anything in there, you know, don't go dumping it straight in the intake. But shouldn't hurt anything just to just to hose that stuff off and kind of keeps that build up down a little bit. Now we're really done. Beam. Now you do have to be careful if you're in the state of California with these, you might get cancer. Oh no. I know y'all can't see because I sure as heck can't either. I love mercury, but this is some dang e-tech shit.